We have a big flare, a filament that's poised to erupt, and some dark active regions on the sun's far side. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week has been calming down in terms of solar storms, but not in terms of solar flares. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, there are a lot of regions in Earth view, especially along the east limb with more rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. Meanwhile, the main regions we've been paying attention to are region 3519, 3528, and 3529. In fact, region 3519 is rotating through that hot longitude that if you recall last week, Region 3514 launched that big X-class flare. Well, yes, that longitude is definitely keeping these regions uh, flare active. So we might see a bit more activity from this region as it continues to rotate to the sun's west limb. Meanwhile, we also are watching this big filament right here. This filament was kind of connected to the bottom of, of region 3528. And so it, we were worried about it being destabilized and it's showing signs of instability. If it launches while transiting the Earth strike zone, it could actually be an Earth-directed solar storm. So we're keeping definitely keeping tabs on it. Meanwhile, we're actually coming down from the fast solar wind from this coronal hole right here. We have another coronal hole right here where we're going to get a little bit of fast wind over the next couple days. Not expecting very much, but it could give us a little bit of a roar at high latitudes for a day or two just before Christmas. And we are definitely paying attention to these regions on the east limb because they are boosting that solar flux up quite a bit. Now back to region 3519, if you watch it on the 21st in the morning, ready? Bam, right there, do you see that? Now that actually caused a radio blackout at the R1 level, almost an R2 level uh, over the Asian Pacific. But since then things have calmed down a little bit. We are paying attention to this region because we're worried about potential uh, radiation storms. It also launched a solar storm to the west of Earth, so we're not going to get anything from that. But it could give us that risk for radiation storms over the next couple days before things begin to calm down. And it also means that other regions that are going to rotate through that hot longitude could definitely become big flare players, even if they're not right now. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to have that solar flux stay up and expect that our run to R2 level radio blackouts are going to remain on the menu this week. Now, as we switch to our far sighted sun, we can no longer look at stereo A imagery for the sun's far side because stereo A is looking at the front side just like we are. So we have to go to uh, HMI and AIA imagery of the sun from about two weeks ago to get an idea of what kind of regions are lurking on the sun's far side. And as you can see, the ones that are rotating into Earth view right now are regions, old cluster region 3508, 3510, and 3511. These regions, especially region 3510, actually caused us some issues last time around. They actually gave us some big solar flares, so we might be seeing that. In fact, as we take a look at the JSOC HMI helioseismology far side, monitor. We can see those regions as they rotate to the sun's far side. This is the gold region. The region that's in gray is actually the front side of the sun. So as we see these regions rotating to the sun's far side from the last time we saw them, see the dark uh, uh, dark regions, those that shows that they are surviving their far sided passage. Plus we have region 3514. Remember this region? This is the one that gave us that big X-class flare just last week. So this one, it also looks like it's not just surviving its far side passage, it might actually be growing. In fact, as we take a look back at the sun, uh, last week, we actually did see this region start growing pretty dramatically as we rotated to the as it rotated to the sun's west limb. So this region is continuing to grow on the far side, and as it comes back into view here in about uh, ten days or so, we could actually get more big flares from it and possibly some more solar storms. Now, switching to our moon, 
We are now passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 26th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe Santa Claus lurking around, well, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, and the storming could last in through the 24th, so we could get aurora clear through Christmas Eve. But things should be settling down by about the 25th. Uh, however, don't look badly about it because we do have that filament that's still poised to erupt and it is in the earth strike zone right now so if that thing launches it could be an earth directed solar storm and we could be getting a potential for a big solar storm here uh before new year's so just keep your fingers crossed if you're an aurora photographer now as we take a look at mid latitudes well we're not quite as rosy a picture we're only expecting unsettled conditions but we do have up to about a 10 percent chance of a minor storm at mid latitudes so aurora photographers well if you want to get a, a little if you're dedicated you could get a little bit of a chase on the 23rd not expecting all that much things should definitely be quieting down by christmas eve and again it looks like we're going to be waiting for the sun to launch maybe another earth directed solar storm for us to get some decent shows down here switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week we do have about nine active regions in Earth view right now, and that is boosting that solar flux quite a bit. We are sitting in the 180s and 190s this week, and it's likely going to continue easily throughout this week. We are also in the moderate noise range, and that is also likely going to, going to continue throughout this week. We may quiet down a little bit as region 3519 rotates to the sun's far side, but likely the risk for radio blackouts is going to stay reasonably high. NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout and about a 5% chance of uh, X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout. And likely that is going to continue to, to be the conditions easily this week. We might even see a little bit of a boost as region 3514, that's on the sun's far side, as that region rotates into Earth view sometime next week. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders just kind of hang in there over these next couple weeks because radio blackouts are definitely going to be with us on Earth's day side. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to radiation storms. We are sitting at the D1 normal range, and that is uh, at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. But right now, we've only got about a 5% chance of uh, a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level, and this is because region 3519 really isn't giving us all that much right now. We think it may be tuckered out a little bit. So as it rotates to the sun's far side, likely we're not going to see this risk increase all that much, if at all. We're going to keep it right about 5%. But realize that we do have a couple other regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view uh, here over the next week and the week following. So you know we could start seeing that risk rise again, but it probably won't be until about the end of this week. So the space weather this week is calming down in terms of solar storms, but not so much in terms of solar flares. Now, aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a bit of a show right around the 23rd and into the 24th because we do have that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating through the Earth's strike zone. But only if you're dedicated should you chase if you're a mid-latitude aurora photographer because it's probably not going to be that strong of a solar storm. We might just have to wait to see what else the sun might throw at us here over the next few days. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're liking that solar flux being boosted so high. I'm sure that gives you some decent propagation, but also the noise on the bands is reasonably high. We do have a risk for R1 to R2 level radio blackouts on Earth's day side. So just kind of deal with that over this week and possibly the next week before things begin to calm down just a little bit but at least you're getting decent radio propagation and at least there aren't any big storms on Earth's night side to bother you. And now GPS users, well, things aren't quite so great for you. We are sitting close to 200 again when it comes to the solar flux. You don't like that high solar flux, especially when you're 
dealing with uh, low latitude GPS reception. But thank goodness we don't have any big solar storms going on on the sun's on the uh, the Earth's night side. So if you're a GPS user, well, as it, if you're near low latitudes, especially in the southern hemisphere, make sure you stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk because your GPS reception could be pretty dicey. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.